How many know about King Hezekiah? The rest of you are going to find out about him. <laughs> but King Hezekiah, one of the kings of Judah, lived about 700, 750 years before the birth of Jesus. And he's important because the word is expressed in three different sections in the Bible. The word is found in 2 Kings and in Isaiah and in 2 Chronicles. And when God thinks enough to put the same story in three different places, somebody gets the idea that this may be important. There's something going on here. I just want to take a few minutes to set the stage, to bring everybody up to where we're going to be at. The time is about 720 years before the birth of Christ. It's about 250 years after King David ruled in Israel. And it was a turbulent time. It was a troublesome time. It was a time when the nation had fallen away from God. Somebody hear me tonight. You see, after the death of Solomon, the third king, the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes that came together in unity, split apart. There were the 10 northern tribes and then the two southern tribes which consisted of Benjamin and Judah. And these two kingdoms that were once united but now separated, they fought amongst themselves. Kind of like families do. They fought wars like the Civil War in this country, even though they were living side by side one another, they were bitter enemies and had little to do with one another. The ten northern tribes drifted far away from God. They started entertaining pagan customs and started pagan worship and idol worship. They started serving other gods and denying the one true Jehovah God. And judgment was coming. You see, a powerful army from the northeast called the Assyrians, they arose and they swept into the land of Israel. The ten northern tribes called themselves Israel. And as this army swept into Israel, it conquered city and tribe and people after people. And they eventually captured the whole land. Eventually they came to the northern tribe's capital called Samaria. And there they laid siege on the capital city there for three years. The enemy surrounded that capital city. And eventually breached the walls, destroyed the city, carried off the king and all the people of the lands. The judgment was now knocking on the door of Judah the kingdom of Judah, the southern tribes. The northern tribes were carried off and now the armies were right at their back door. <coughs> you know, since the split of these two kingdoms, the northern kings, they followed after idol worship. They followed after Baal. They followed after the wrong things and they were not God-fearing people. In fact, the Bible says they were all bad kings. History records them as being evil, bad, unrighteous. And they led the people away from serving God. And they built high places on the mountains. And they built pagan temples. And they built groves, worship centers, where they would worship and sacrifice and offer their children up to pagan gods. They abandoned the Lord in His ways and the judgments of God eventually came upon them. As bad as the northern tribes were, the southern kingdom wasn't much better. They had a series of good kings then bad kings. They were wishy-washy. And many of the bad kings worshipped idols and they offered sacrifices to pagan gods just like their brothers to the north did. And Hezekiah was born in this atmosphere. 
In fact, it says in 2 Chronicles 28, and I'll just read the Word of God if you can put that up, Lisa. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Unlike David his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and also made cast idols and worshipped the Baals. He burnt sacrifices in the valley of ben Hinnon and sacrificed his sons in the fire. He sacrificed his own children to pagan gods. He followed the detestable ways of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burnt incense at the high places and on the hilltops and under every spreading tree. This was the environment that King Hezekiah was born into and raised under. A total disrespect, a total dislike of God and His ways. An environment that was geared to do what was detestable to the Lord. Perhaps some of you may have been born and raised in a similar environment. Perhaps you may have been born in an environment that disregarded God. But I doubt if any of you passed your brothers through the fire or sacrificed them to other gods as Hezekiah's brothers were. But let me tell you, just because you were born in that environment doesn't mean you have to stay there. Just because you were born in that situation doesn't mean that you can't overcome. Just because you were born in that environment doesn't mean that you can reach beyond where you are into the goodness and the gracious and the mercy of God. This pain did, King Hezekiah did. By the way, Hezekiah means Jehovah is strength. I find it ironic that Ahaz, the king over Judah at the time who gave birth to his son and named him Jehovah is strength, would turn away from the things of God. But Hezekiah wasn't like his daddy. No, sir. He saw the value in God. He saw and understood the righteousness in the ways of God. And he turned away from all that nonsense and he served God with all his heart. He tore down the high places. He tore down the pagan temples. He cut down the groves and he did everything in his power to bring the people back into the ways of God. He was a righteous man. Second Kings records this in chapter 18 and verse 3. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father David had done. He removed the high places. He smashed the sacred stones. He cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made for up until that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. The Word says there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow him. He kept the commandments of the Lord that had been given to Moses and the Lord was with him and he was successful in whatever he undertook. In the meantime, while Hezekiah was trying to live right, to do right, to encourage others to do the right things, the army of Assyria had swept into the northern tribes and had literally wiped out his brothers to the north. The capital city and everything fell and all the people was carried off. Now the king was watching as his army was starting to get closer to him. King Hezekiah, in a panic, he tried to bribe the Assyrians. He took the gold and the silver out of the storehouse of the Lord. He even took the gold off the temple doors 
and he sent it up to the king of Assyria, trying to appease him, trying to buy him off. The enemy took the gold and took the silver and kept marching towards Jerusalem. Now, as King Hezekiah looked over the wall of Jerusalem, there were 200,000 men of war completely surrounding the city. The king of the armies of the north had been got destroyed by Assyria. Assyria had marched in on Judah, had taken the cities, and now they were encroaching upon Jerusalem itself. There was only a remnant left, Robbie. There was only a small number left, and they were completely surrounded by 200,000 men of war. And this is where we're going to pick up tonight. 2 Kings chapter 20.